I, I want to start with just the the stark numbers that are in this report. Uh, nearly seventy percent of people in Detroit, um, and and lots of people around the uh, Southeast Michigan, really struggling uh, just to make ends meet, just to do basic things um, uh, that that we all need. And a lot of this still has to do, I guess, with the pandemic and the disruption. Uh, absolutely, our Alice report gives us a. a accurate understanding of what's happening uh, in our households and in our communities. Uh, the report uh, that everyone has access to now uh, says 2023. It's actually a reflection of what was happening in 2021. Uh, and the sad part, uh, Stephen, is that we are still very much in the same position. 38% uh, of our households in Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County are still struggling to meet their most basic needs. And even with uh, pandemic support and resources that came uh, from the federal government, uh, some of the tax credits uh, that were instituted, uh, we still saw our families uh, struggling uh, to afford food and and housing and transportation uh, and child care. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that a lot of people really, really think anymore that the, the pandemic is still causing the kinds of disruptions uh, it, it did. Can you talk just a little about why that's true? Why we're three years uh, from the beginning of the pandemic now, why is it still having this effect? So during the height of, of the pandemic, uh, we were actually able to institute a number of what we call pandemic era tax credits uh, and stimulus programs. And so I believe that it kept people uh, afloat for a period of time and what's happening now, all of these programs are coming to an end. So uh, a prime example, uh, the SNAP benefits uh, that were helping uh, people uh, have more resources uh, to, for food insecurity, they actually came to an end on March 1st. And since that time, we've seen a 33% increase in the number of calls uh, that we received from 211 just for food insecurity. Uh, we actually had a partnership uh, with DTE Foundation uh, to get 20,000 gift cards, uh, Kroger gift cards, into the hands of people who are struggling to meet their most basic needs. So, uh, you know, even though we are three years in, uh, the resources that were coming have now come to an end. Most of them have come to an end. And so people are still uh, really struggling uh, to meet their basic needs. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, what you hear everyone talk about all the time is also uh, inflation and, and nice. rising and our wages have been stagnant. So when you have all of these factors uh, coming into play, uh, it really ends up uh, being uh, a pretty difficult situation uh, for a number of our families in our region. And and we're talking here about working families. I mean, I really want to emphasize that this is uh, this is a, a a thing that is happening to people who have jobs, uh, who earn money, and they still are not able uh, to earn enough. To, to be able to take care of their family. Mm -hmm. Far too many of our jobs in the state of Michigan are still um, paying below $20 an hour. And if you think about, uh, you know, the household, the survival household budget for a family of four in Southeastern Michigan is over $88,000. Yeah. And uh, most of our uh, families, uh, you know, one or both are working in retail, uh, we're in some type of a customer service role. Uh, and they, those roles just are not paying enough uh, for our families. So even with all of the pandemic supports and resources, we still saw our families um, well below that $88,000 marker. And like you said, with both families working. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I want to do some comparisons uh, of our region to other parts of the state and maybe even to other parts of the country. Is this more acute here in Southeast Michigan and especially in Detroit than it is other places? Uh, so one of the, the key takeaways with the Alice report is that Alice is all of us. Ah. So uh, you might see a, a variation of a percentage point here or there. Um, our entire state is still um, at this 39% number. So, you know, we were looking at a tri-county uh, snapshot is at 38%, but the state's at 39%. So mm -hmm. uh, this is something that we're seeing everywhere. It's across our age uh, demographics. Uh, we see our heaviest hit households uh, is with our, our youngest uh, 25 and under um, population, as well as our seniors um, who are the hardest hit. Uh, but we also see it across our demographic groups. 60% uh, of black Michiganders are struggling to meet their basic needs. So uh, in terms of how we compare uh, across the country, especially when you think about uh, the Midwest uh -huh. uh, and the Rust Belt, you will see many of our major cities, our sister cities, 
have numbers that are very similar to ours. Uh, and then countywide, you still have these numbers that are hovering uh, around the, this 40% mark. Yeah. So I, I do want to talk about solutions. Uh, as you point out, some of the, the safety net measures that were taken um, during the pandemic are now going away. We're going back to, I guess, a, a pre-pandemic state there. Um, I don't think there's probably much hope that 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 safety net will be strengthened again, uh, at least not to the extent it was. Um, but talk about some of the other things that we really need to be thinking about in terms of um, making it easier for people to earn uh, you know, wages that allow them to support their family. So I think uh, quite a, a bit has occurred that is giving us um, some momentum in terms of uh, most recently uh, the working family tax credit uh, that was um, passed into law uh, used to be called the EITC, uh, where now um, the state is is matching 30 percent of the resources that we receive from the federal government. So, you know, families are now uh, getting five thousand dollars back. Um, when they file their uh, their taxes, um, and it is actually uh, putting more money back into the pockets of our working families. And I appreciate that you emphasized the word working um, because that is key. Uh, there are a number of conversations that people are having around, you know, universal pre-K, uh, preschool, excuse me, um, and, and universal um, child care and trying to make that much more uh, affordable. Uh, we operate um, the Early Childhood Support Network. We have 11 counties that we're supporting, and uh, that by far is is the most, um, the largest expense that our families are experiencing. You know, I have an eight-month-old at home, mm. and it is the exact, I mean, that this is one of our largest costs. So um, I believe these are systemic issues. Uh, Stephen, there are a number of coalitions. If you look at all of the uh, different uh, factors with Alice, whether it's transportation, health, housing, uh, food and security, uh, there are coalitions all around our region of people, business leaders, community leaders, nonprofits coming together to try to tackle these issues. But a lot of it really will depend on policies that are passed to support working families. But what about moving the needle on the policy side? Uh, I think a lot of people feel kind of helpless when they think about that. Advocacy is key. Um, I'm someone I stress uh, voting rights. I think it's really important that everyone who has the ability to vote cast their vote. But once you cast those votes, you have to advocate for the policies that matter. Um, our organization, uh, we send out a number of different resources for people to be able to sign on uh, to different letters. They can you know, actually get a template of a letter that they can send uh, to their local representative. Um, they can also send it uh, to their um, their. Uh, congressperson as well. And uh, we have a number of agencies, you know, we have the league uh, that does this at the state level, um, but it really is rolling up our sleeves. We have to study. I actually have to pay attention to what's happening uh, in Lansing, even happening, what's happening with our local governments uh, and, and really uh, inform ourselves on ways that we can start to have more of a voice uh, in the advocacy space uh, for the things that are most important to us. 